Welcome back to X Root Homestead. I'm Angela. Today we're going to be talking about forage. When it comes to permaculture, whether it be an animal or a plant, we want things that offer more than one function, right? We want stack function, which means doubling up on the uses or the benefits of things that we're bringing into the farm or homestead. Forage has an insane number of benefits. Let's talk about those now. So forage isn't annual, but it readily self seeds which means less work. I don't plant my borage right away in the spring. Rather, here in central New Jersey, zone seven, I allow my strawberry plants to bear fruit. Then after the first harvest is over, because I grow ever bearing strawberries, I plant my borage. I start these from seed. They then grow up and through the strawberries and by the time that fall strawberries are ready for harvest, they say the borage helps to make the strawberries taste sweeter. So this year I'm testing that out. This is the borage bed. I have another strawberry bed where borage is not planted. One really cool thing about borage is that the nectar inside these blossoms refills in just minutes, a very short amount of time. Where other blossoms take a long time to replenish their nectar stores in order to feed pollinators, borage is not one of them. Its nectar is rapidly ready and available. It's really cool and why this plant is usually loaded with pollinators. Because it's a pollinator attractor, it's gonna be really great for guilds, things like um, apple tree guilds, pear guilds. It's gonna to help to expose pollinators to blossoms on your crops if they haven't already found it. Another thing that it has is little hairs that are all over the stems and leaves. Those hairs make this a repellent and an unpalatable plant to a lot of wildlife like rabbits and deer. The long taproot of borage allows it to mine nutrients or pull up nutrients from deep within the soil's sublayers. It's especially good when it comes to calcium and potassium. Those two things are pivotal for the health of your tomatoes or any uh, cucumbers, squashes, pumpkins, anything that's going to suffer from blossom end rot, although that could be a magnesium deficiency too. So test your soil if you're seeing that. But what's really awesome about it is that when this plant absorbs those nutrients into its tissue, that means when you chop it and drop it or spread it as a mulch, it's gonna return those nutrients to the soil. Hornworms and rabbits are said to hate borage. So if you're struggling with hornworms on your tomatoes or you have rabbits in the garden, try bringing in some borage. These flowers are also edible for humans, which is really cool. And because this is such an amazing nutrient accumulator, you can take this forage and instead of chopping it and dropping it and using it as a mulch in your garden, you can actually chop it and drop it and put it right in your compost heap. All of those nutrients are gonna seep into your compost and some folks say that compost heaps with borage allows it to heat up and activate more quickly, making your compost readily available sooner. Forage is not technically invasive. Again, this is a self-seeding, short-lived annual, but because it does self-seed with such vigor, some folks have an issue with it. So make sure that you plant it in an area where you're okay with it coming back. Also be sure to pull up any little seedlings in the spring if you don't want it to sprout where you're setting it. Just like comfrey, in addition to all of these benefits for the garden, it has medicinal properties. I personally do not keep a home apothecary. I like knowing that I have this in the garden should I need it for a medicinal purpose. There are lots of folks that swear about the different uses and um, functions, medicinally speaking, of borage in your home apothecary. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to research, be sure to research that.